Okay, uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Gergely Chatari and I'm working in the open source program office of, uh, of uh, Nokia. And I am Luis Velarde, uh, head of cloud and infrastructure within Telefonica Global Team. And we will talk about Silva and Anuket in a format of a fireside chat, which practically means that we do not have slides. And <laughs> also, I would like to ask you to ask questions or say anything what, the, what you know, gets into your head uh, because of the presentation. We, we actually, we have just one slide, this one that you have here, but it's just so that we don't forget what we have to talk about. That is just for that. Okay, but first let's maybe talk about uh, a bit about what uh, are these two projects, because if it wouldn't be clear, these are two different open source projects and maybe we will discuss why these are different open source projects. So let's first introduce Anuket. So Anuket is an open source project which aims um, to define uh, cloud infrastructures and uh, cloud uh, infrastructure workloads. And uh, the main problem that Anuket tries to solve is the integration problem between the workload and the cloud, because currently this is one of the biggest uh, issues when introducing uh, cloud native network functions in the telecom industry, that whenever we are trying to integrate our workloads with the, with the platforms, that will be a very big and expensive uh, exercise. And this is what Anuket uh, intends to solve by creating specifications for the platform and specifications for the workload. And if everybody is compliant with the specifications, everybody is happy. This is not happened yet, but. And that's Anuket and Silva. I'm representing Silva here. Silva is a project that uh, is very related with Anuket, but they are not the same thing. We will talk about differences in a minute. Uh, Silva basically tries to resolve a set of issues that operators have identified that are common for telco operators, but actually may uh, affect other industries as well. Uh, and Silva is, has two main objectives. It's a project with Linux Foundation with two, ma two main objectives. One is uh, impl developing a reference implementation or a framework, a reference framework for cloud native stacks. That's the first objective, to have a reference for cloud native stack, and is where we use Anuket as uh, the basics to understand what we think a cloud native stack is. That's the, fir the first objective. And the second objective is, once we have this reference defined, uh, build it and implement, a have a reference implementation to validate that network functions can be onboarded on top of this reference implementation. So it has two objectives, building the reference uh, framework and having a validation program to demonstrate that network functions or to allow network function providers and application providers, in general, workload providers, demonstrate that their solutions are cloud native because they can run on top of a cloud native stack. This is what Silva is about, but they are not the same. Uh, Anuket and Silva, to me, the main difference would be that Anuket is, as Gergely has just commented, is more uh, requirements oriented, defines or standard oriented, defines uh, the standard and defines requirements. And Silva is more implementation oriented. Actually, he uses these requirements because tackle the same issues, at least part of the same issues and implements a solution that abides by, by these requirements. Yes, in my head, uh, their difference is, is in the, how concrete their implementation is. Like Anuket is really like uh, specification and it enables several implementations, while Silva is one specific implementation of uh, uh, a continuous service platform or a CNF platform. And that's how Silva is um, solving the integration issues because you have one platform 
and everybody, everybody have to run on that one platform, while Anuket tries to be a bit more um, uh, liberal in this sense that Anuket, we are, in Anuket we are defining the API, or quoting quote API between the, the workload and the platform, and Silva could be, or maybe it is, one reference implementation of the Anuket array to specifications. And this is exactly true because the main reference for us is the array 2. It's true Anuket has different reference architecture, architectures and the one that we have identified that resolves the issues and help, help us, uh, the telco operators, uh, advance in the cloud native world for the use cases that are coming is the array 2, the containerized uh, one. And actually, <laughs> between that, the performance profile one. So uh, this is why this is our main uh, reference. Uh, but as Gerli says, uh, Anuket has more reference architectures. Yes, we have also a reference architecture for OpenStack based uh, based cloud. But uh, Silva is is uh, focusing on on the cloud native. And uh, as we both explain, both Anuket and Silva is. Uh, focusing on, on verification or conformance tests of CNFs on specific platforms. Uh, therefore, there is a, a big overlap between the, the functionalities what we are trying to address. And uh, there is also uh, a connection between these two projects in, in this sense because uh, Silva is using the Funk test framework for, uh, for, for running the tests but it does not use the whole reference conformance test, if I'm not mistaken, but correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, so there's some points where we interact and we are working together, but when I, we enter into those, I will describe them one by one later on. But first of all, we have to discuss if we really need a reference implementation. Why do we need a reference implementation? Any, any view on, on that? Well, I think we need ref so because uh, cloud native is a technology where there is a lot of room for diversity, even if you are just running Kubernetes, uh, you have to choose a runtime, you have to choose a, a CNI plugin, you have to choose a, a storage solution, all of that, and all of those are making differences in the runtime performance or even maybe the, the APIs of your, of your stack. And as we are working in tech or where we are constrained on, on, on latency or, or on performance, we need uh, to specify all of these details to make the integration of the stack and the CNF seamless. And that's why we need the reference implementation because that is practically like a very opinionated specification, a very strict specification of a stack. Yeah. And this is actually the situation that we have identified is the, the main issue we want to resolve is the fragmentation. So today the industry is very fragmented because even though, let's say, talking about cloud native and talking about containers, let's say we are everybody going and talking about containers and using Kubernetes as the orchestrator for containers, it is a standard de facto, even though it isn't a standard de facto, everyone does it in their own way. So it's not just the vanilla Kubernetes and we all follow this. There's different implementations of the Kubernetes, but not the basic Kubernetes, the extensions that are required. Because in the, for the telco operators, the, uh, the workloads that we need to deploy have specific characteristics. Uh, they need acceleration, they need to guarantee the, the latency. It's, it has been commented in the previous session about the Camara APIs and how to support APIs that accommodate latency. Also, the stack has to accelerate and reserve uh, ports so that being uh, providing guarantee in the latency. There's also additional security. There's maybe need for service mesh for security or for any other reasons. Uh, we may need a specific synchronization for the open run specific workloads. Uh, Automation, because if we are talking about an environment with many uh, containers distributed, so many little virtualization sites, 
we need to manage them all, so we need to automate deployments. So there's a specific uh, requirements on top of just having a base, a vanilla Kubernetes. And everyone is doing it in their own way and it's very fragmented today. There's different certification programs, at least three different types of programs. Every vendor has his own pro uh, application vendor, his uh, program. Every stack vendor has his, its own program. Operators, we have our certification programs. So we think that we need to have a reference that tells us this is the basics. This is what should be incorporated, should be included. We need to have a service mesh. We need to have automation. We need to have deployment scripts that make easy to deploy these uh, extensions. And to do that, we need this reference implementation. We could still be having different programs and probably we will still have different programs, but having one basic program that is common for all the vendors, all the stacks and all the operators is at least a benefit for the industry. And we are using Anuket to provide us the requirements for this referent implementation. Yes, I, I agree that we need uh, one uh, open uh, conformance program for, for CNS. I think openness is also like very key uh, here because it should be an, uh, it should be an industry uh, consensus uh, what is in the, in the conformance program, what is needed uh, to be supported by CNF and the, and the platform, because if we are go, if we are trying to agree on one particular stack, then uh, then we all have to agree in in, uh, in what are the properties of that stack. And even in even in even in the open uh, source world, we have several CNF conformance programs. That's the interesting and funny part of it. So we have the we have the Anuket uh, conformance program. Uh, what we call call Anuket assured. There is a conformance program in in, in CNCF, and uh, there is a verification program in Silva. <laughs> so I think we should somehow bring all of this together and uh, create something together. Yeah, uh, I agree. We should work in improving this interaction. We are already doing some activities together. Something important to say is that uh, there's two things to keep in mind here regarding the different certification programs. The Silva certification program is actually is not certification and we especially call it, specifically we call it validation because it does not pretend to guarantee that anything that has been deployed can be just going to production. It's, that's not the intention of the validation program. The intention is to validate that the network function is cloud native enough so as to be deployed in, uh, in this reference platform that, ha that has the basic extensions to Kubernetes. So if an application needs an accelerator and let's say uh, EPA characteristics, this reference implementation incorporates them and the validation of a network function that requires these capabilities demonstrates that can be deployed there and it has no attachments to the hardware or the configuration of, the, of this Kubernetes. It can just deploy the application and uh, demonstrate that the application is working uh, with a basic validation. We are not doing performance testing. We are not doing all the uh, battery of tests that are intended for that specific function. This is to be done by each operator before they put it in production. The validation is a reduced one, let's say, limited at least up till today, just to confirm that the network function is cloud native enough to be deployed and actually, when it is deployed, to demonstrate that it is a network function, not just a set of images put, put together. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. And another thing that makes different the certification or validation programs that we have is that uh, today we are using Anuket as a reference or reference for the performance profile uh, part. So, as we said, the acceleration part, let's say. No? But there's additional requirements that we take that are not coming from Anuket because Anuket today is not incorporating them. Maybe all these can come together and we will have all together, but we have requirements for additional entities. For instance, the security requirements are coming from the, right now, the European Security Entity Organization, ENISA. The synchronization requirements for Open RAN are coming for, from the ORAN Alliance. So the use of PTP, for instance, is not considered in Anuket today. 
but we need it because uh, open run workloads, BDU and BCU likes, they are important helco applications as well, uh, functions. So we have different requirements. Uh, so uh, Anuke requirements is a subset for us. And we are using a subset of the requirements because they have others for other parts. So it's not exactly the same certification, but I agree we should keep working together in these things. Yes, yeah, so I think we should align these and, and uh, maybe the best way is to collect these, uh, these requirements, the gap between the Silver and Anuket, and bring them into, into Anuket and then we will have uh, a one-to-one -one mapping between the requirements. Of and, and I agree with that. We should work on that. Okay. So I don't know. We, we, we can go and talk about the specific things that we are collaborating, things that we are doing together. But before that, if anyone has a question before we keep going in the audience, yeah, go ahead, please. If you can repeat it. Yeah. 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 Okay, this is addressed to me. Yes. I, I, re I repeat the question, just the, the end of the question. The first, first one was just a comment. Yes. Uh, you know, we can work that. No, the analogy that you said, I think, is very appropriate. Uh, having the validation, conformance, and certification at different levels of validation, I think, is very applicable. Uh, for Silva, it's just validation. Anuket is a bit further, and an operator has to certify everything before putting it into production. For, of course, because we have responsibility there. Um, that's a statement that you, and I agree with that. And your question was um, about if we have other requirements apart from Anuket, uh, do we have a similar procedure with the rest of the organizations? Well, we are working on that. So there's a lot of initiatives, organizations, ent entities that are working today in different things in, in cloud native world. Um, it's a mix of overlapping uh, about things. So, of, of course, we are having interlock and relationship with all the other organizations to identify where we can, where we can uh, benefit and where we can provide feedback because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. I mean, we are not just re rewriting the, the ANUCA requirements. They are there, so we are just using them. But as part of the initiatives that we are doing together, we have provided them feedback to improve them. And as we are discussing here, we can even improve our collaboration. Well, we want to do the same with the other organizations, but the one where we have right now the relationship well established is with Anuket. Okay, any other question before we keep going? Okay, so the next topic is what are the initiatives where we are collaborating? Actually, I can name uh, four things that uh, Gregory briefly has commented before where we are working together. The first one is that uh, any release of uh, Silva needs to be RC2 compliant. So this is the, the first thing. So what we are doing is we are running the RC2 compliance tests just to confirm where we, we are okay. And if there's something that needs to be changed, this is an input for us to improve the, the well, it's not a product, <laughs> to improve the open source solution. We are important. Silva is not creating a product. It's creating a reference framework, an open source solution. Out of there, products, it's up to someone to do products. 
but the reference may be improved because it has to be RC compliant. If we are saying that we are going to be a cloud native stack, a reference for cloud native, we have to <laughs> abide by the CNCF and cloud native uh, RC compliance. So this is the first line of collaboration. Any point there? No, correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And as an experience, um, we already run it in the beta version in a previous, well, the official release will be soon, but the beta version, uh, we identified that there was some discrepancy in a specific case where we ran it and uh, the ingress controller, there was two ingress controller and there was some kind of uh, dispute <laughs> for the ingress controller control within the, what, uh, uh, came by default with uh, Kubernetes and what is provided by within uh, Silva. So this was some kind of feedback because this test may be modified, the existing RC2 compliance testing may, may be modified because you are not forced to use the ingress controller from Kubernetes. If there's an implementation that is trying to be a reference that incorporates an ingress controller that have additional functionality, maybe it is possible to disable the vanilla one and enable the other one. So maybe this uh, has to be considered. So these are things, input, that we are still discussing. And same as that, we had other inputs. And in the other way, we received, we identified errors, <laughs> let's say, or flaws that were resolved after running the RC2 compliance tests, which is, I think, positive for both or both groups. Yes, I think that's that's a very important aspect uh, uh, in this uh, in this interworking that that um, Silva is providing feedback to Anuket, so it's not only like a single direction um, communication channel, but but it's a bidirectional collaboration between the communities. Yeah, in that sense, as we have just discussed, PTP. Supporting PTP may be one requirement that we are providing feedback to, to Anuket. Uh, that's the first point of collaboration, being RC2 compliant. The second line of collaboration is, as we said before, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. So in the Silva validation program, uh, and in general in Silva, there's some scripts that we have to run to confirm things. For instance, before we validate that the network function is actually deployed properly, we have to confirm that the platform, the Silva platform has been actually, is actually running and has enabled the capabilities that are required. For instance, let's say Multus capability that is configured there or Calico or whatever is the CNI that may be required. So we have to confirm that uh, the platform where you are going to validate something is actually properly configured. And we have scripts to confirm that. Well, we could have created any script framework to do that, but we have Xtest from Manuket. So we are using Xtest as the, as the framework to do the, the, these scripts that we are running. And also, if these scripts are deemed interesting for Anuket, they can use them. If somehow in their uh, in the other reference, in the conformance uh, testing or whatever, using these scripts is something that is valuable for them, it's, it's free, <laughs> it's Linux Foundation. It's open source, so they can use it as well. Second point of interaction. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a third point where we are working together is uh, an additional scripting. Once we, we have confirmed that the platform is properly configured, let's say it requires SRIOB because the application demands SRIOB to reserve the ports, the physical ports, and then accelerate and guarantee the latency. Uh, once we confirm it is enabled, we can deploy the application, the network function, and it will be run and we can validate that it is working. But in the validation program, we have thought that uh, we need also to demonstrate that the application is actually making use of that capability because one of the main <laughs> things or the main issues that we want to resolve is a uh, setting of resources. So if an application indicates that it needs some resources, some specific capability, 
we need to demonstrate that it is using it because if not, we are some kind of wasting resources. So we have incorporated this testing, not only that the application is deployed, but also that it is actually using what it has requested in the Helm charts. No? Uh, and we are using uh, also the X test for that. And we are doing it together because within Anuket, they are also having this interest. Uh, there's people from the Anuke, uh, Anuke team working together with Silva. I can name you. <laughs> I can name Petar or Cedric as well. And we are working together in preparing these scripts because they are interesting for both of the two conformance and validation programs. Yes, and I think that's that's a very important aspect of these these collaborations that it always uh, boil down to to persons and and uh, people who are active in both of the the communities. These these persons are somehow the bridges between between these these communities. Yeah, and we are we are very thankful for, to them for the support they are providing us. And another aspect where we are working together, actually we are starting or we should be starting because it's just very new, is the workload conformance in Anuket. Because we are, the validation program verifies that the application can be deployed. But even before verifying that, the application should demonstrate that it's cloud native, let's say. It's following the cloud native uh, requirements. And again, Anuket has a program for that. It's, what co it's called the workload conformance. And we want to incorporate in the validation program the running the workload conformance for a network function before it enters into the validation program. But this is something that is starting right now. No, The requirements are defined by the scripts to validate that are still uh, not uh, created. And we can work together, I think, because it's the same kind of testing that we are going to do. Yes, we, we share the same problem and that's a good ground for collaboration. Yes, in, the, in this sense, it, it would be just running the conformance from Anuket before starting the, it's not really a silver thing, but since we are interacting, we can do it together. So the team from Silva can help the team from Anuket create these scripts. We should start by defining which is the minimum set of requirements that have to be covered just to say, well, this is minimally CNC, sorry, cloud native uh, workload, but of course this should evolve to a more complicated thing. And these are the four main areas where today we are we are working together. But we, there's a still some things coming in the future, but there's a question before. Well, yes. And then the last one is it works in your specific R. Is that how you're seeing it? Yes. So the question was that that uh, CNCF tag defines how cloud native a workload in general, and uh, what Anuket is doing is that it defines how that workload can run in a telecom environment. Yes, absolutely. And in, in uh, Anuket, we built the area two requirements in a way that they are referring back to the uh, CNF test suite test cases, which are based on the CNCF, CNF working groups uh, work. So there is a, like a chain of, of, uh, of requirements uh, here. And on top of that, we defined those extra constraints which are needed because of the telco use cases like multi-network support and all of that uh, strange things. And this is how the Anuket workload requirements are, are created. As one specific example we can provide is um, an application could be following Kubernetes and using uh, alpha APIs because they exist in Kubernetes. But 
a requirement from the CNCF to be cloud native is don't use API, uh, alpha APIs because they will be uh, probably can be obsoleted without any notification. So it's not recommended to use them. So if this is if we, after we discuss, we consider this is one of the requirements to consider cloud native, this is something that uh, Anuket will incorporate and we will demonstrate before uh, taking to validation. Okay, so talking about the future, there are things that we have to discuss. One is sustainability, that I think is a topic you wanted to... Yes, comment. and I would like to discuss a bit sustainability from two meanings. One is that uh, the environmental sustainability and and uh, and Silva is kind of leading the pack here because in Silva there is a, a working group for environmental sustainability and and there there is a like a thinking about how to how to calculate the the footprint and the used energy of of different CNFs in a in a in a stack and I think that is a very good. Uh, initiative and I really would like to uh, get the requirements identified there into into the Anuket side. Yes, and actually maybe I didn't mention in the beginning the main use cases of Silva are uh, is the distributed environments uh, with things like in core network the UPF which is going to be distributed, actually is distributed, uh, open run that the VDU per se is distributed an edge that also by definition is distributed. And in this distributed environment, uh, one of the main things to take into consideration is reducing the energy consumption because we cannot have many stacks scattered around the world, all of them uh, consuming a lot. So we should be conscious of that to reduce the environmental impact and cost as well. So this is something that is one of the requirements or the things that topics. And actually, as Gerli said, in a specific work stream has been created in Silva to tackle that issue. And this is one of the things where we could feedback Anuket or uh, we can work together because requirements that we may define or situations that we may define uh, will drive into requirements in Anuket and, or not. If in the end Anuket is not tackling that, we may need it. So we will use it. So this is about environmental sustainability that you commented. Yes. Uh, the other meaning of sustainability that I wanted to discuss a bit uh, is the sustainability of, uh, of open source projects and the health of open source projects. And uh, unfortunately now we are in the situation that we have to talk about this uh, when we are talking about Anuket. Uh, we are lacking of contributors in Anuket. And as it is an upstream project for, for Silva, I think that's a common problem for, for us. Um, so what do you think, how can we tackle this, this uh, sustainability issue of, of Anuket? And we can maybe focus on, on the projects which are relevant for, for Silva, like Funktest, RC2, RA2. Yes, uh, this is something that we need also to work on. One of the main things of these projects is to have uh, adoption, no? to have enough audience <laughs> for the project. We understand that the problems that we want to resolve affect all the operators. We started a group of European operators and with us come some uh, vendors. So we are working on that, on that and we are expanding the list of operators. In the end, we're just a group of European, but this is a situation that affects the all the world <laughs> is worldwide. So this will, uh, we will have more uh, participants soon. But we need to have uh, more uh, vendor workload providers understanding the need to become cloud native by design, be, being capable of deploying in this reference implementation of a well, container based or cloud native based environment. And this will help also uh, understand Anuket because it will feed all of us having this. So we are working in and we are inviting anyone who has workloads or network functions to demonstrate that they are cloud native by coming and being validated in, in Silva. Therefore, demonstrating that they are RC2 compliance from in the workload part. 
Yes, so I think that's that's a very important aspect of of of, uh, of this uh, open source sustainability that we need adoption. We need users of these projects uh, because from users we will get the contributors. Because otherwise, like, why would anybody contribute to these projects if they are not not using them? So that's uh, that's a very important aspect of of this. There is another uh, difference of these two projects, and we didn't discuss that. Maybe we can discuss it as you just mentioned now. This. European operators, like Silva is considered as a European open source project, whatever it means, while Aluket is like an international or worldwide uh, project. Do you see really that Silva is a European thing? No. So it started as that because um, a group of European operators, we came together, identified the, that we had common issues and we put this all together. And it started as European, and actually we started with the Linus Foundation Europe because it makes sense. But uh, it affects everyone, so uh, all other operators from outside of Europe are invited uh, here. The fact that it's um, a part of Linus Foundation Europe doesn't mean it cannot participate anyone. All the sessions are open as uh, anyone in Linus Foundation, so it is not really an European uh, issue what we are trying to resolve or, or tackle, but it is a group of European countries, oh, sorry, uh, companies that have started it. And I think we, we covered all the topics. Any new topics? Okay. <laughs> any questions from the audience or any statements? Okay, for Silva, uh, you can go to the following uh, web uh, page, silvaproject.org, HTTPS, Silva Project, Silva is with a Y, silvaproject.org. We also have a GitLab uh, environment in Silva, we have also have a stack in Silva, so you enter a Slack, sorry. If you enter a Slack and write Silva, you will find it, but silvaproject.org has everything. That's the, the best way to understand what is it about and participate and, under, and know where the next meetings happen. For Anuket, it is anuket.io what you should look for. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so any other question? Oops. Okay, if there are no more questions, thank you for attending and that's all we wanted to share with you.